Hello Year 5. Hi there. I hope you're all well. I hope you've had a good week. I hope you've been enjoying the activities that I've been sending you via Miss Ellison. I'm going to send uh, another little wadge of stuff this week, including um, a kind of a grid, it's like a little box, and, and it's got a list of all the activities that I've suggested that you could do to do with our Victorian topics. Um, <clears throat> and I'd be really grateful if you could go through that list and for the activities that you've completed, the ones that you've actually managed to get a chance to do, it would be super if you could first of all tick that you've done it and also if you could write a little comment in the box next to it to say whether you've enjoyed it, whether you found it difficult, whether there might have been something that would have worked better, just so just to give me a little idea of uh, what the activities have been like for you to do and whether you've had a chance to actually do them is really useful for me to know as well to be honest. So that's coming through this week. Um, and also I will be sending you the words for music italiano so that you can sing the whole thing with me in a moment. So hopefully you'll have the words with you so that we can all do it together. Okay, so uh, another little bit of something at the end of this session, but I'm just going to make it quite a quick one today so that you've got time to look at that grid that I'm going to send through and if there are some things that you haven't completed that you'd like to have a go at, you've got a bit more time to do it. Okay, so uh, we're just going to do two activities today. One is going back to the one, two, three cup of tea song that we did ages ago, all about triple time. And for that, if you happen to have some kind of junk percussion or an actual percussion instrument in your house or even an instrument that you can play your scale on. You know when we were doing chime bars when you could go from one to eight, C all the way up to C? If you have got a musical instrument that you could play that scale on that would be super as well for this activity too. So you could pause this video and go and find something to play and then come back. I'm going to play, where have I put it? I'm going to play some jingle bells on this one just because I like the sound. Okay, so let's see if we can just remind ourselves of how the song goes and then we're going to see what we do with it. Okay, so I'll sing it first and you have a go after me. Goes like this. One, two, three, one, two, three, have a cup of tea. Three, two, one, three, two, one, with a sticky bun. Crunchy chocolate biscuits, crunchy chocolate biscuits, crunchy chocolate biscuits, crunchy chocolate biscuits, crunch, 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 crunch. I hope you remember all of that. I did it nice and slowly just so that you can remember it. If you want to do the patterns as well, that would be brilliant. <clears throat> Off we go. One, two, three, one, two, three, have a cup of tea. Three, two, one, three, two, one, with a sticky bun. Crunchy chocolate biscuits, crunchy chocolate biscuits, crunchy chocolate biscuits, crunchy chocolate biscuits, crunch, 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 crunch. Nice long two beat note at the end there. What do we call a two beat note? A two. What do we call a three beat note? Two, ooh, hopefully you remember that, good. Okay, so that whole piece is in three time. So just to make sure that you guys have really understood the concept of three time, I now want you to get your percussion instrument. If you haven't found a percussion instrument, if you found a melodic one, then what I want you to do is to choose one note or see if you can find the note that we're singing at the moment. I think it's a C but I could be wrong. And I want you to just play that note three times. But the important thing about the three time, the triple time that we're working on, is that beat one has the most emphasis. That means we're going to play it a little bit louder than the other two, okay? 
otherwise it sounds really draggy. If you do an emphasis on beat one of each three, it makes it dance. One, two, three, one, two, three, have a cup of tea. Three, two, one, three, two, one, with a sticky bun. Can you try it with me? Let's get this three time really established. So a good emphasis on the one of each of those three. Ready? Off we go. One, two, three, one, two, three, have a cup of tea. Three, two, one, three, two, one, with a sticky bun. Crunchy chocolate biscuits, crunchy chocolate biscuits, crunchy chocolate biscuits, crunchy chocolate biscuits, crunch, 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 crunch. And don't forget to do the three beats all the way to the end of the song. It doesn't just finish because you finish singing. It doesn't work like that. Did that work? Could you do it? Did it get complicated when you had to do the beat and the crunchy chocolate biscuits at the same time? Should we go faster? Ready? Off. We go one, two, three, one, two, three, have a cup of tea. Three, two, one, three, two, one, with a sticky bun. Crunchy chocolate biscuits, crunchy chocolate biscuits, crunchy chocolate biscuits, crunchy chocolate biscuits, crunch, 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 crunch. Fabulous! Great! You can put your instruments down now. Now, <clears throat> if you were listening really carefully, you could hear maybe the pitches of the tune that we were using there. If we were to say that the first note was a C, and then, so that's on number one, one, two, three. Can you hear that you've got a low, a middle and a higher note? Can you now count in your head up the scale, one, two, three, four, five. Do that in your head and see if you can work out which number of the scale each of those numbers in the song is. That makes it awkward, doesn't it? So we know that one is one, but when we sing one, two, what number of the scale is that note? Mm. You should be shouting three at me. It's the third note of the scale. Hmm. What about when we get to the name three, the word three of the song? What note of the scale will that be? Let's count up again. So it went one, three. One, two, three. That's the fifth note of the scale. Could you hear that? So if we were going to give those the letter names of the notes, imagining we're playing our chime bars again. C is number one. <clears throat> then you'd count up C, D, E would be the third note of the scale, wouldn't it? Three is E. And then count up another two. F, G, C, E, G. Can you hear that little combination of three notes? It has a special name. It's called a tonic triad. Triad because it's three notes. And it's made up of the first, the third and the fifth note of the scale. You can have tonic triad starting on any note, on any letter name. But for this one, because we've been playing chime bars in C, we're gonna say C. C, E, G, C, E. E, G, have a cup of tea. Can you hear that that phrase uses the same three notes? Yes? What about the next phrase? What's happening there? So we had C, E, G, C, E, G. That's where we finished on a G. Have a cup of tea. What about three, two, one? That phrase. What notes will they be? Can you give them the letter names? Is it the same as we've had before or different? It should go backwards. G, E, C, G, E, C. But it doesn't rhyme with sticky bun. Doesn't matter. C, G, E, C, G, E, C. Can you hear that pattern?
pattern of three, that tonic triad is what a lot of chords are made up of. So if you were going to be playing any chords on your guitar or a piano or whatever, a chord is a combination of more than two notes at the same time. And most chords will be built around the one, the three and the five in the scale. I hope that makes sense. Good. So we're going to be looking at uh, things a, a bit to do with that after our half term break. Yes, we get a bit of a half term break. Won't that be unusual? OK, so time to find your music Italiano now. If you've got the words, fantastic. If not, you're at a slight disadvantage. <laughs> so last time I saw you, we were looking at the Italian words for loud, forte, soft, piano. Gradually get louder was a crescendo and gradually get softer was a diminuendo. So we had dynamics there. That's what's called dynamics, louds and softs. OK, then we had the words for some different tempos. Tempo meaning, meaning the speed of the music. Largo, slowly it's not a race. Andante, a walking pace. Allegro, a fast and lively speed. And presto, go as quickly as you can. And remember, if you can roll your R's, amazing. So we are just going to sing that very first section all together. Hope you've got your lovely Italiano voices with you. I hope you've been doing some of the sing-alongs because that would have really warmed up your voice for today, the one that I did today. You'll definitely have your teeth in for that one. Right, so here we go. Let's hope it's not too loud. Forte. There we go, it should be just right. Off we go. Music is as lost of Italian. then as you go back to the beginning you do the same words as you did before until you get to piano and now we have some new Italian words to learn legato can you say that legato that's the Italian word for smooth so you sing it like it's all joined together with custard smooth is what is needed when it says legato I'll do that again. Smooth is what is needed when it says legato. Make it super, super smooth and gluey. Can you try it? Off you go. Smooth is what is needed when it says legato. You really need a teeth in for that. It's such a mouthful. Then we have the complete opposite. Have you noticed how this song is quite often about opposites? So we've had smooth and gluey. Now the next sound is going to be short and spiky and the Italian word is staccato. If you've got the words you can see these, see how they're written. Short and spiky for staccato. So really make sure that there is air between every single note. Short and spiky for staccato. Short and spiky for staccato. It doesn't mean give them a punch on the nose. You've just got to have some air in between them. Short and spiky is staccato. Can you try it for me? Off you go. Short and spiky for staccato. I got the wrong words, didn't I? So those two together go like this. Smooth is what is needed when it says legato. Short and spiky for staccato. I recommend you do that all in one breath. Otherwise, there's no space to take one. Can you do it with me? Smooth, big breath now, off we go. Smooth is what is needed when it says legato. Short and spiky for staccato. Good, we're nearly done. The very last two phrases are now about different sort of elements. They're not opposites. The first one we get to do, if you were looking at the music, this uh, way of performing something or singing something or playing something, 
has a little V shape over the top of the note that it wants this to happen on, a little V like that. So not a big crescendo V, just a little one. And it means this time you have got to punch it on the nose. It's called sforzando. What a brilliant word. Sforzando. It's got lots and lots of consonants in it. S's and V's and Z's. Sforzando. You say it? Sforzando. Brilliant. So the note that we start sforzando has got a little one of those, a little accent it's called. And that's the one we punch on the nose. So it goes like this. Let it end with a great sforzando. Really hit it. Let it end with a great sforzando. As long as you're being safe about doing that in the classroom. So make sure you face away from somebody when you do that. Let it end with a great sforzando. You do it for me. Off you go. Let it end with a great sforzando. Really big sound there. And then the very last phrase, we are gradually going to get slower, like lots of pieces do, and that's called a rallentando, rallentando. So as we go through these two bars, it's gradually going to get slower. Gradually get slower with a rallentando. Gradually get slower with a rallentando. Don't have to get quieter as well. Try it with me, off you go. Gradually get slower with a rallentando. And then you'll see at the end, it says, fine. No, this is Italian, so we always say the last vowel as well. Fine. Fine. Say it for me. Fine. And it's like going, ta-da. So we're going to go, fine. You do it for me. Fine. Lovely. Now in Italian, they don't have things called diphthongs. Mm. A diphthong is where you put two vowel sounds together. And we do them a lot in English, but in Italian they don't do them. So that last sound it needs to sound more like an E than an A. Can you hear that that has got two vowel sounds in it? An E and an E. And we just want an E. Fine! Rather than Fine! That's not Italian. Doesn't work. Fine! Try that with me. Fine! Fabulous. Now I happen to notice that the CD that I've got here with lots of school children doing it, somebody obviously didn't tell them that. And it sounds horrendous, the very last note that they sing. Fine! We're not going to do it like that, are we? We're going to sing a beautiful Italian vowel sound. Fine! Thank you. Do you think we've got it? Right, we're going to try verse two without the music and then we're going to stick the whole thing together. So from the beginning of verse two, music uses lots of Italiano. Same thing, but with our legato, our staccato, our sforzando and our rallentando. Okay, got the words? Fab. Off we go. Music uses lots of Italiano. Loud is forte, soft is piano smooth is what is needed when it says legato short and spiky for staccato let it end with a great sforzando gradually go with a silentando i'm going to do that last phrase because i mucked that up beautifully shall we go from let it end from there off we go let it end with a great sforzando gradually get slower with a ralentando Good, you got it. <coughs> Excuse me, I'm going to have to cough. <coughs> I'm okay. I just have a really fluffy cardigan on that gets stuck in my throat. I hope you're going to sing it better than me because this is the last thing we're going to do today. Right, let's go back to the beginning of this tune. Hope you've got it all ready to go. Sitting up super smart. Big breath, it goes fast. Music is as much so Italiano. Loud is for taste, soft is piano. Gradually get louder with a big crescendo. Then go back to soft with that and then you end up. Longer, slowly, it's not the best. Big breath. And Dante is at walking pace. Allegro fast and lightly speed. And presto, go as quickly as you can. Back to the beginning. Easy, easy, so. 
drum finish there with a huge orchestra. Great, so I hope you've enjoyed doing lots of silly Italian words. Your extra bit of homework this week, if you choose to accept the challenge, is to do me a poster with all the musical elements that we have learnt about over the last few weeks. So you can use those Italian words. I've put a little list of some other words that we've used at the bottom of the Music Italiano lyrics. Make me a colourful poster. Put these Italian words on. If you know what the signs of them are as well, if you're one of those musical people, <clears throat> if you know that a diminuendo looks like a V going this way, or if you want to put some treble clefs in and say what they are, that would be amazing. I'd love to have some really colourful posters that when we get back to school I can stick in the hall or in the studio. That would be amazing. So, make me a poster, have a little look at the grid, but above all, enjoy your break and I'll see you in a short while. Bye everyone! <laughs>